Hello and welcome to GC360, where news comes full circle. I'm Ross Thompson. My co-anchor Maddie's away this week, but we're still bringing you news from the Georgia College campus and across the Milledgeville community. Coming up, an update on a traffic accident that seriously injured a Georgia College student. Did you know, an international film festival is happening on campus. There's still time to take it in. Registration woes. We ask the expert what happened to the computer system on Monday morning. Stay right here. Deep Roots, Milledgeville's biggest event, is coming this weekend. Our Evan Spot took a, lo took a look into what's planned for the festival this year. Deep Roots is a time when downtown Milledgeville turns into a music festival for all to enjoy. People of all ages come and enjoy the festivities, which include an art show, barbecue, a car show, a kids zone, concerts, and fun for all. Local businesses such as Blackbird Coffee put on the festival, backed by volunteers. GC360's Natalie Sadler sat down with Jimmy Holder, the owner of Blackbird, to discuss Deep Roots 2019. Uh, it, myself and a few other people, since the very beginning, uh, I mean, it's been, this is our 16th year, uh, and uh, it's, a, it's a core group of volunteers, it's all volunteers. Deep Roots has helped put Milledgeville on the map. This is the greatest thing about Deep Roots, is depending on kind of what you're into, is what you kind of think that's what Deep Roots is about. This small space will soon become home to an expected 20,000 people. Kids play in the kids zone, whoever goes and looks at cars, whoever can go to shop, whoever can pick the music, and it's just kind of like this one big family gathering where everybody gets to have fun. With an upcoming band from Australia, the expansion of the kids zone, the food, the car and art shows, Organizers hope this year's Deep Roots will be bigger and better than ever. Reporting for GC360, I'm Evan Sabat. Georgia College students are finding new ways to expand their learning possibilities through the liberal arts. GC360's Connor King attended one of these special events. This week, Georgia College students in the Department of World Languages and Cultures are putting on an International Film Week in Peabody Auditorium on campus. And we worked with the language department on getting five different films, one for each day, for Monday through Friday, of different languages. World Languages Interim Chair Peggy Elliott says faculty members chose films in the language they teach. On Monday, it was Shadow, a Chinese film. Tuesday was Shun Li and the Poet, chosen by Juan Antonio Alcaria, who teaches Italian. Wednesday... Our Spanish faculty provided the suggestion of the film Un Traductor, and uh, on Thursday the film Victoria was suggested by Dr. Fraunhofer, who teaches German for us. The last offering is Tzika, and that will be shown Friday afternoon, and that was submitted by our French faculty. Admission is free, along with snacks, drinks, and popcorn. Each film concluded with a Q&A session led by a group of students. This first International Film Week for the department expands upon a previous festival. Spanish assistant professor Aaron Castroverde says that the previous event featured only Spanish films. The reason for the change to do something that involved more of the department and more of the focus on all the things that we do as opposed to just simply Spanish. The festival featured some momentary unwanted drama during Monday evening's showing of Shadow. The power flickered and went out. Attendees sat in the dark briefly along with many others in and around campus. Power eventually was restored and the film resumed. For GC360, I'm Connor King. In many towns and cities around the country, pedestrian traffic signals provide more than just visual cues and warnings, but not in Milledgeville. GC360's Carl Tullius looks into this issue. None of the traffic lights here in Milledgeville emit sounds that warn pedestrians of dangers. According to Kyle Collins, the District Communications Specialist for the Georgia Department of Transportation, District Spokesman Kyle Collins says no one in Milledgeville has requested this safety feature, which other cities have, such as downtown Augusta area. Nowhere else in our district except the, the downtown Augusta area actually has the audible 
countdown, if you will, signals. Uh, federally, we're still up to all the requirements. That's not something we typically do unless there's a request for accessibility for those that are visually impaired. We haven't received one of those in the military area. If, if we do, that's something we can look into possibly implementing in the future. The city of Millersville has yet to respond regarding this matter. In 2018, an average of four deaths per day occurred on Georgia's roads due to unsafe driving behaviors, according to the Georgia Department of Transportation. 17% of deaths were pedestrians. Many students lack awareness of this particular problem. I remember last year, actually one of my friends, he was an international and he asked me specifically, like, hey, like, why is there no beeping signals or anything like for blind people and I like never even thought about it but then like I remember there was a blind student last year who I saw all around on campus and like I always wondered like after that moment like how do people do it with disabilities. Even students who bike to class face potential dangers. Usually I just need to like slow down or like get off my bike to make sure that people know that I'm there and I'm gonna cross. <laughs> Because if you stay on your bike and you're going fast, they, they don't notice you. Traffic police can help during busy crossing times. I honestly think like it's more for the cars though, but then for the people crossing. Because the people just run out in the middle of the street and the cars just have no clue what to do. This is a story that is still developing with more improvements to come for the Milledgeville area. Reporting for GC360, this is Carl Tullius. Now joining us in the studio, we have Carl. So Carl, tell me what, it's like, what it was like to work on this story. I think it's a really interesting story because it gives you that kind of mind-opening or eye-opening um, thing where it actually is a kind of privilege to have a society built after you. In this case, it's about accessibility, people that cannot see or are legally blind, for example, would not be able to notice if the light will like be red or if it's white. Like it's it's actually a privilege that we have. The people who, for example, that we interviewed, they didn't know about this, some of them. They didn't actually thought about it beforehand or one of them as we saw in the in the story. But I think that's what's interesting about this. Well, thank you very much for your time, Carl. We're going to take a quick break, but when we return, we'll have uh, your Milledgeville cr crime blotter and an update on tra a traffic accident that seriously injured a GC student. Stay right there. In the spring of Elmira, New York, a boy was born into an all-American family. The odds of him achieving his dream in the fashion industry? One in 23 million. The odds of having a child diagnosed with autism? One in 68. I am Tommy Hilfiger, and my family is affected by autism. Learn more at autismspeaks.org slash signs. some hard time. Craig, knock it off. Sorry, Mom. It could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. And that could set you back a few years. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Welcome back. A Georgia College student was hit by a car on West Montgomery Street outside of Beeson Hall on Sunday. GC senior Bailey Berkner is recovering in a Macon hospital after surgery to put two titanium rods in her left and right legs. Her father, Darren Berkner, says she is in great spirits. The Georgia State Patrol identified the driver as 18-year-old Patrick Smith. He was sent to Navison Hospital in Milledgeville with minor injuries. Charges are pending, but drugs and alcohol are not suspected. Berkner had planned to graduate in December. Our thoughts and prayers go out to, the, to Bailey and her family. Now for the Milledgeville police blotter. 
According to reports from the Milledgeville Police Department, a fight broke out between two ex-roommates over a mattress on Wednesday uh, at, an, at an apartment on North Columbia Street on Wednesday, October 16th. Police report the mother, as, the mother of one of the former roommates stepped in to stop the altercation. Separately, p police received a report the next day that a heavy-set black man had stolen three bottles of Hennessy liquor from Tipsy Liquor. Also on North Columbia Street, surveillance footage showed a man wearing a white shirt and gray pants remove three bottles of alcohol from the shelf and conceal them in his pants before exiting the store. The license plate of the getaway car was also captured on video, but no arrests have been made. Also on Thursday, October 17th, the proprietor of the Super Inn on North Columbia Street reported that an employee had received a fake $100 bill. Police are holding the bill as evidence. There are no suspects in the case. And finally, on Friday, October 18th, police arrested and cited a woman for shoplifting at Walmart. According to Walmart, to a Walmart loss prevention officer, the woman admitted, admitted, admitted to using an $8.88 tag to check out a $49.82 betting item. Georgia College seniors trying to register for classes early Monday face an unusual hurdle. GC360's Natalie Sadler has the story. Seniors had quite the registration scare Monday morning. At 7 a.m., the pause ad drop page started to lag. Within five minutes, the system was unresponsive. Around 7.20 a.m., the ad drop page was back online. Susan Kerr, Chief Information Officer, explained how GC's IT department fixed this crash. We were on a phone call with the university system. Um, technology de department there. They run our instance of pause and we were able to get them working on troubleshooting immediately. Um, within about 15 minutes we were able to get the system cleaned out and everything was restored to normal operation. A crash like this has never happened before. GC's IT department is running diagnostics to determine the cause. There was another event or process that also started at 7 o'clock a.m that may have contributed to the, uh, the unresponsiveness of Paul's. Kerr said that the IT department added additional resources at the university level Monday night. This prevented the system from crashing Tuesday morning. Yesterday's logs are also being analyzed by the electronic vendor. Uh, if we can identify what process kicked off, we can make sure that that process doesn't start up at the same time registration opens up and avoid that conflict. In order to add new anti-crash memory, the servers were rebooted at 6 p.m. Monday night. Around the same time, the GC campus experienced a five-minute power outage. Kerr said these events were not related. And there were some students who were having a, a hard time getting into Degree Works, which is a system that we run locally. So that power outage did affect Degree Works, but it did not have anything to do with a power outage to pause the registration system. After cleaning the server and adding this data information, PAUSE was ready to handle registration. We were able to do registration this morning without a hitch. For GC360, I'm Natalie Sadler. Joining us today in the studio, we have Natalie. So Natalie, what was it like to wake up early on a Monday morning and find that registration was down? Well, it wasn't the most pleasant experience. I can imagine. Um, I don't think anybody likes being waking up at 7 a.m. to do anything. And when you're waking up at 7 a.m. to register online, um, that wasn't fun either. So I woke up. I thought everything was going to be going fine. I was like, I'm a senior. It's going to be easy getting registration. Um, I thought very wrong. So as soon as I log in, the little spinning wheel on the, my computer starts to go. And at first, I'm freaking out. I'm like, why is this going so slow? I thought that it was maybe just my Wi-Fi, but then I texted my roommates who were also up and they said that the same problem was happening to them. And so we just kept waiting, waiting. I tried to refresh the page and then it just crashed and I got that error message. Um, it was kind of scary, but it felt good to know that you know everybody else had the same sort of message. So I knew that I wouldn't be missing out. I had my upper electives, but you know, it was, it was 20 minutes of uh, anxiety, just kind of waiting around to see what would happen. But then um, as soon as I was about to go and um, see what was going on at the advising office, my roommates texted me and they're like, it's working. So I registered for my classes. So I'm super appreciative that the IT department was also on top of it because I was not expecting it to be fixed in just 20 minutes. I thought it was going to be an all day thing of chaos. So it was um, interesting. Um, it, it, it was a good way to have my last registration, but I'm glad it was fixed. <laughs> I'm sure a very large sigh of relief from seniors everywhere uh, yes. went out that day. Yeah, I'm glad it wasn't the freshmen. <sighs> that went would out have, good. Would have been a nightmare. Yeah. Well, Natalie, thanks for joining us in the studio today. Coming up, our sports team interviews an international athlete to find out what it's like for them. And we ask when they, ask when they go home and what it's like to play in a different country. Stay with us.
boy was born into an all-American family. The odds of him achieving his dream in the fashion industry? One in 23 million. The odds of having a child diagnosed with autism? One in 68. I am Tommy Hilfiger, and my family is affected by autism. Learn more at autismspeaks.org slash signs. some hard time. Craig, knock it off. Sorry, Mom. It could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. And that could set you back a few years. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Welcome back to GC360. It's time for your weekly sports update. I'm Kirsten Skipper. I'm Daniel Master Tatero. And I'm Herndon Lee. With fall break over and the weather cooling down, that means it's time for late fall intramurals to start. Late fall features new sports not offered in early fall, such as ultimate frisbee, indoor volleyball, outdoor soccer, three on three basketball, and the brand new sport, archery tag. The ever popular flag football is back and the competition for intramural championship shirt is stronger than ever. Good luck to all the teams competing in all the sports. The women's soccer team has had a rough go of it for the past three games. They barely won their game against Albany State by a score of 2-1, to one, which was their third win of a three-win streak. Since then, it looks like the tables have turned with a loss against number four Flagler College on Sunday the 20th by a punishing score of 4-0 to zero, and another loss against Young Harris by a 3-0 margin. These losses put the team record at 3-3-1 in the Peach Belt Conference, putting the Bobcats seventh in the league standings with 10 points. Only the top eight advanced to the Peach Belt Conference tournament beginning on November 12th. You can see the Bobcats back on the home field this Saturday in a match against Columbus State University. Here at Georgia College, there are some athletes who have to adapt to life in the States a little more than others. Reporter Nathan Connolly has the story of a golfer from down under. Here at Georgia College, we have over 200 student athletes, but what you may not know is some of them are from overseas. I got the chance to interview with Bailey Seifley from the men's golf team. Here's what he has to say about his time in America so far. I'm uh, Bailey Seifley. I'm from Canberra, Australia. I have a great time living over here in the States. I've enjoyed the both cultural perspectives of Georgia and Alabama. I enjoy the people, the atmosphere, the cultures, just everything about it. It's a great time. Uh, I love being able to have the ability to play collegiate golf and have these opportunities that are just endless. Uh, I really do miss being in Australia. I wish I could go home and see my family every weekend that I see my teammates head home when we have a weekend off, but it's, it's a fun time being over here and I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. I get to keep in touch with my family and friends a lot of the time. I get to talk to my family once or twice a week just through FaceTime and messaging. It's, uh, it's tough, but it's definitely worth it. So I don't really get a whole lot of opportunities to go home. I get to go home twice a year at best. So that is during summer break when it's winter at home and it's freezing cold. And the other time is at Christmas break when it's boiling hot. I get to go home and hopefully head to the beach. So it's a great time. So even though that I miss home, I know that I have to work hard on the golf course and just as hard in the classroom and keep up my GPA and keep my scoring average as low as I can. As you can see, Bailey enjoys his time here in America, but sometimes he misses home. For GC360, I'm Nathan Conley. Coming up for sports this week, GC Volleyball takes on UNC Pembroke at 12 p.m. at Centennial Center. We played UNC Pembroke twice last season and beat them both times with a score of three to nothing. Later on Saturday, GC Soccer plays Columbus State at 3 p.m. on Bobcat Field at, on West Campus. Last time we took on Columbus State, the Bobcat, Bobcats lost 4 to nothing, so our girls will be hungry for victory. Next week, GC Volleyball will take on Flagler at home. Flagler and GC have a history. 
The last time these teams played was earlier this season, and we lost 3 to nothing. These girls will be really wanting to take home a win next Friday, so be sure not to miss it. That's it for sports. Coming up, we will tell you about what to wear and what to eat at Deep Roots with Jordan and Frankie. Stay right here. Town of Elmira, New York. A boy was born into an all-American family. The odds of him achieving his dream in the fashion industry? One in 23 million. The odds of having a child diagnosed with autism? One in 68. I am Tommy Hilfiger, and my family is affected by autism. Learn more at autismspeaks.org slash signs. some hard time. Craig, knock it off. Sorry, Mom. It could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. And that could set you back a few years. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Welcome back to the entertainment section of GC360. I'm Frankie Mastris. And I'm Jordan Richardson. This weekend is the Deep Roots Festival. As the day goes on, you might get hungry. There are numerous options for meals throughout the festival weekend. Places to eat downtown, such as The Brick, Buffington's, Amici's, and many more might get crowded. If you're trying to fight the crowd, then there will be food trucks available at the festival. Some of the trucks will include Big House Barbecue, Hole in the Wall, Let's Talk About It, Patty Wagon, Piece of Pita, and Rapici's Italian Ice. I'm getting hungry just thinking about this food. What about you, Jordan? Oh, that food sounds amazing, but I'm more concerned about what I'm going to wear to Deep Roots. What do you suggest people should wear to Deep Roots? Well, if you're stressing over what to wear, just like I am, keep in mind it'll be mid-70s and rainy. You might want to aim for closed toed shoes and maybe a light jacket or sweater. Keep it casual with a flannel or cardigan. If you want to spice things up, wear angle boots and a cute dress or skirt. A mock neck, long sleeves, and bell bottoms could be a simple but nice outfit as well. Whatever you wear, make sure it's cute and comfortable for the downtown festival. Thanks for joining us. Now let's throw it over to Gabby with the weather. Welcome back to Weekend Weather. I'm Gabrielle Duchateau. This past weekend, Mildred got hit by a tropical storm. Saturday got the most of it with it raining practically 24 hours. Georgia College was tracking the storm and thankfully no measures needed to be taken. Now let's jump into this weekend's weather. Pay close attention because this could affect your plans and outfits for Deep Roots, as Frankie mentioned. It looks like we are headed for another rainy weekend. This Friday, expect a rainy day. The low will be 65 and the high will be 74. Humidity will be at 81% and precipitation at 50. Saturday, aka Deep Roots, will be filled with scattered thunderstorms, so be sure to bring an umbrella and a rain jacket, just in case rain decides to crash the party. Unlike earlier this week, it will be a bit warmer with the high at 79 and the low at 67. But that also means the humidity will be at high and at an 85. The chance of rain stays at 50%. Sunday will have similar weather to Saturday. Scattered thunderstorms are expected. The high will be 79 as well and the low will be 63. Chance of rain again stays at 50% and humidity stays steady at 85. That's it for this weekend weather. I advise everyone to pay close attention to the rain this weekend, especially if you are planning on going out for deep roots. Let's toss it back to Ross. And that's it for this week's edition of GC360. Thanks for tuning in, tuning in, and we hope to see you again next week for a very spooky Halloween episode. And when we're not on the air, we keep you up to date on our social media pages. Facebook.com slash GC360, at GC360 News on Twitter and Instagram, and on our YouTube page, youtube.com slash GC360 News. Always available, always available to you, GC360, where news comes full circle.